Namo Amida Namo Amida Namo Amida Namanda 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 Good morning and welcome. With palms pressed together, please join me in Gasho. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. If one speaks or acts with pure thought, happiness follows. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Good morning. I'd like to begin this morning's service with four invitations and one announcement. The first invitation is to our Buddhist Education Thursday night Zoom, hosted by Reverend Matt. The Thursday night education series is entitled Shinran's Lamp. This is a discussion on Shinjin and Mata Shou, uh, the letters of Shinran Shonin. Uh, the second session is scheduled for February 25th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. And if you have already registered for that first session in January, you do not need to re-register. Anybody who is interested in uh, registering, please uh, uh, access this via uh, Betsuin Programs, one word, Betsuin Programs at gmail.com. The second invitation is for our March, our March, uh, oh, BuddhistChurch.org. Um, actually, I did test this, uh, so both will lead you to the correct. Uh, so the Thursday medical series, it's in, entitled uh, Human uh, Humanitarian Crisis, Health in a Humanitarian Crisis. Uh, this is presented by our Sangha member, Dr. Jolene Nakao. Uh, medical epidemiologist for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who will discuss the COVID-19 response and your health. This is being conducted on March 18th at 6.30. Uh, the uh, access also via the temple website. The uh, uh, third invitation and one of my favorites is Girl Scout Cookies. Uh, please support Troop 569. Uh, due to the pandemic, the Girl Scouts are not able to perform their time-honored tradition of selling Girl Scout cookies door-to-door -door or in front of businesses. So the uh, Buddhist Church of Sacramento sponsored Girl Scout Troop 569 is using the online cookie ordering. Cookies are only $5 a box. There is a gluten-free option for $6 a box. And discounted shipping is available for six boxes or more. The last day to order is March 28th of uh, this year. So please uh, send your name and email address to 569cookies at gmail.com. 569cookies at gmail.com to receive a special Troop 569 ordering link. The fourth invitation is for high school scholarship applications. The Buddhist Church of Sacramento Adult Buddhist Association is accepting applications for their Community Service Award scholarships for graduating high school students who exemplify excellence in community service. Qualifications and an application form are available on the Buddhist Church website. The deadline for application submission is April 30th. Also, 
the Asian Pacific State Employees Association Foundation is awarding educational scholarships to students in the greater Sacramento region. The APSEA website will provide you with qualifications and an application form. The deadline for this is March 14th. Uh, the one announcement that I have is regarding SMUD and your uh, electric utility. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, SMUD will not turn off your electricity due to non-payment through April 30th. If there is difficulty in your household making the um, monthly payment for utility, please contact SMUD. There is also a medical equipment rate discount. So for anybody who uses medical devices at home, for instance, CPAP, ventilator assist devices, powered wheelchair mobility items that require charging or dialysis as examples, please contact SMUD at www.smud.org. At this time, I'd like to continue our service with reciting the three treasures found on page three of our purple service book. Three treasures. Fortunate is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Rare is it to encounter the teachings of the Buddha now we hear it. If we do not seek the truth of the Dharma in this life, in what life shall we find it? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken within us our highest aspiration. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the Dharma and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become units in true accord, in a life of harmony, in a spirit of universal brotherhood, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriad of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent profound and wonderful teaching. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda.
Good morning and welcome to today's service. With palms pressed together, 
please join me in Gashio. Our former bishop, Socho Koshin Ogui, taught, my life is not only my life. My life is made up of the countless sacrifices, caring, and kindness of others. Thus, let us strive to live with gratitude in our hearts and minds. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Thank you for joining us on this third Sunday of February. I hope that everyone is staying safe, mas masking up, receiving vaccine, um, or are at least scheduled to do so, uh, because these are among the uh, personal responsibilities needed for us to safely resume our temple activities and our day-to-day -day lives as we once knew them. I would like to take this moment to give a shout out to our custodian, Bob Chavez, who since 1998 has been responsible for keeping our temple grounds tidy, safe, and secure. Uh, these duties have uh, not become any less important during this time of COVID. So thank you, Bob. I would also like to thank our current Board of Trustees President, Gordon Nita, who uh, in addition to overseeing the day-to-day -day stability of our temple, represents our Northern California district churches and who thoughtfully attends to the needs of our gardens. I'd like to also give a shout out to our immediate past president, Stuart Ito, for his electrical engineering expertise in enabling us to share the Dharma message not only here, but around the world. And also to our dedicated Dharma school teachers and teaching assistants who are continuing to deliver meaningful program to our youth. Finally, I would like to thank Reverend Patty Oshta for sharing a heartfelt Valentine's Day message with the Buddhist Women's Association of Sacramento. Reverend Patty shared the observation on the one day of the year dedicated to expressing love that throughout our lives, our karma is made up of the choices that we make, that a meaningful life is built from what we choose and what we choose not to do. Reverend Patty's Valentine's Day Hoa alluded to the courtship and life that she has been fortunate to live with Reverend Bob. These recollections brought both laughter and tears to my eyes. More than that, Patty Sensei's message made me reflect upon that age-old question, what is love? What is love? After all, everyone wants it, don't you think? Songs, poems, books, write about it. We have, since the beginning of time, expressed our hope for love in one form or another. And so when considering Reverend Patty's message, there are many ways to define love. There is the compassionate love of the countless pioneers who helped to make this temple possible and who came long before us. There's the nurturing love of parents and grandparents. And there's also the romantic love that leads to marriage. Each form has its own character. Moreover, love is not just a concept, but something that we must experience in order to truly know. 
It has to be the deep realization that we live with each day and every moment of our lives. Metta is the Buddhist concept of unconditional or unselfish love. However, when contemplating the essential reality of impermanence, a Buddhist definition of love could be to love is to realize that what is loved will one day be lost. To love is to realize that what is loved will one day be lost. Such a concept is not at all meant to be a negative or a positive. For simply put, it represents reality. Nearly a decade ago, I shared with our Sangha the story of a good friend and fellow physician in order to illustrate the Buddhist concept of love. Now, after Valentine's Day, I'd like to share this teaching again today. At that time so many years ago, my good friend PJ confided in me the challenges that he and his wife had adjusting to their household schedule. Their son was well into his elementary school years. And along with the many projects, field trips, and sports activities of youth, mom and dad, busy professionals trying to balance the demanding career that they sh pursued alongside the growing needs of their young son. And at times, the challenges of their busy household gave way to unkind words and arguments. Coming home from long hours at work, asking each other, who's cooking dinner? Weren't you supposed to pick up? Hey, weren't you supposed to drop off? Hey, I'm going to be late. Didn't you promise that you would? And so on. Shortly thereafter, PJ visited his own doctor in order to investigate a lump that he had discovered in his throat. About a week had passed when next we greeted one another and a long pause ensued. Tears welled up in PJ's eyes. And after a time, he explained to me that the lump turned out to be a cancer. Without surgery, the tumor would surely grow, become disfiguring, and fatal. One could only imagine the thoughts racing through his mind. A young doctor himself, accustomed to caring for others, but now needing care himself. His family just getting started and now looking at the reality that he might not have the chance to watch his son fulfill his potential. True, with treatment, PJ would have a chance at a cure, but life-saving surgery might take away his sense of smell and leave him unable to taste food. His voice would be gone, leaving him unable to speak. Suddenly, in that moment, with these realizations, PJ's Dharma eyes had opened. Suddenly, he realized that every scent, every taste of all the meals he had ever eaten had never been fully appreciated. He had taken everything for granted and only now realized that each flavor was precious. He felt the same about the countless conversations he had had in his life. And now he knew that every word, word spoken could be his last and that each word and every sound was a treasure. In reviewing the activities of his life, he saw now that every soccer game, every Cub Scout Pinewood Derby, every spelling bee, and each meal together with his family were special moments that would come only once. In that instant, my good friend knew that life was too short for unkind words and arguments over the busyness of any day. 
In that moment, my colleague came to recognize and understand that every moment spent with his family was unique and special, that they were moments to be treasured because they could be lived only once. In other words, in that moment, his Dharma eyes opened to the truth of impermanence and to the reality that love is to realize that what is loved will one day be lost. Said another way, in living this life, we must all know loss, but to know love is living life. This is special. Some may recall that PJ opted for surgery. Family and friends gathered together in vigil. With words unspoken together, experiencing the reality of love and the inescapable truth of impermanence. Ten years have now since gone by since I first shared this story and PJ's successful operation. Each day since his recovery, PGA and I suit up in scrub suits, fortunate to give anesthesia care. Now, PJ's son is preparing to leave for college, and I had a moment to ask my good friend what has changed during this time. He paused and shared these words, and I quote, when I realized that for me, my days are finite, that life is short, I realized that I best enjoy the ones that I have left. I am lucky to be older. I am grateful for every day. This is a conscious thought for me every day. Through this experience, the words from my good friend, I realized that I had met a living Buddha, one who is awake. Every taste, touch, scent, sight, sound, and feeling is special. Every moment in this life is one to be treasured. That life is too short for unkind words and that to love is to realize that what is loved will in time be lost. We know this truth of impermanence well, and yet in living life, it is a reality that we must learn again and again. Each time our Dharma eyes are made to open again and again. In closing, on behalf of our Buddhist Church of Sacramento, let me thank you for helping me to share the Dharma. Please continue to care for one another. Wear your masks and get your protective vaccinations. In doing so together, we can look forward to overcoming this pandemic and emerge with a renewed sense of togetherness. In closing, with palms pressed together, please join me in Gasho. My life is not only my life. My life is made up of the countless sacrifices, caring, and kindness of others. Thus, let us strive to live with gratitude in our hearts and minds. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda.